Let's take you back to our top story tonight. And Pretoria's Steve Beagle Academic Hospital is battling with an increasing number of COVID-19 patients. Worrying photos and video has emerged of patients at the hospital that's now been circulating on social media in particular. Hospital CEO Dr. Matabo Matebula joins us now by Zoom to talk more about this. Doctor, very good evening to you. Thank you so much for your time. So the, the pictures that we've seen online are quite worrying. How many COVID-19 patients are currently being treated at Steve Beagle Academic? Thank you, Tim Begile. Currently, we have got uh, 150 that are, are, are acutely ill being admitted. So that's acutely ill. Overall, how many other people are there? No, we only admit uh, seriously ill patients only. Mm. And when you look again, I'm, I'm referencing these pictures and I'm hoping we'll be able to bring them up so some of our viewers can see them as well. They seem to paint an idea and there's an admission to that effect in the hospital, in the statement from the health department in Gauteng that things are quite serious where you are. At what point would you say that the hospital will have reached breaking point? How much capacity do you have left? Uh, the, the, the capacity would be, would be 50 we would, the capacity will be 200 when, when if, if, if every corner of the hospital is filled. But uh, coming from the, the, the pictures that you alluded to, it, it means uh, the, the, that capacity is not acceptable to the community because uh, when we say that is the capacity that will be helping, we are looking at that capacity because it's designed to carry the disaster but uh, it, it seems like it's not acceptable and uh, understandably so to have uh, patients that are treated in the, in the, and in the roofed uh, area but without the walls. But that's what is in the, in the instance that is a disaster. You're referring here so, to the patients who are seen being treated in tents on the premises just outside the main building. Is that correct? Outside. How yes. long are the people who are there how long are they treated in those conditions and why is that more preferred than say for example moving them to an actual hospital uh, those the people that are, are being shown on, on on pictures it it happened last week sunday that uh, we suddenly received a, a a whole lot of them at once so those kind of patients are patients that we call priority one, priority two, priority three are real emergencies. And they landed on the premises within minutes and, and hours of each other. And uh, the, the type of patients that are, you can't say wait because they, they, if you don't uh, uh, attend to them immediately, then you may talk about uh, and, and, and unacceptable uh, outcomes. So what we decided upon was that uh, we don't send them anywhere else because sending them anywhere else, even the, the transportation would be overwhelmed. Whilst we have got that capacity that can still treat them and uh, save them. And we have got people that were there to, to save them. But uh, it, it, it's clearly showing that it wasn't acceptable to everybody. And Dr. Matebula, are those patients who you say started arriving, I think, last week in large numbers within minutes, you said, are they all still in those tents? And in terms of long-term treatment for people who need to stay, say, for a week, a week or two, how appropriate are those tent structures? I mean, in Gauteng, for example, since last week, we've had days where it's actually been quite rainy. Okay. No, they... they... The, the steps being there is for, for emergency treatment, and then once you are stabilized, then you get moved into the designated wards. That area is the emergency unit of the hospital. So it's for you to be stabilized, to be treated so that you are stable, and then you get moved to a definite place. It's so they will not stay there. Please finish your point, then, my apologies. So... so uh, sorry, I cut you off there, Doctor. My apologies. You're going to be building, I see here, you're putting up, in fact, two more tents to accommodate patients arriving at Steve Biko Academic. The hospitals surrounding your area, how are they doing? 
they are in, in a serious uh, prob trouble with numbers that are escalating. On, on, on daily basis, they also are increasing their beds to accommodate the COVID-19. And it, this happened uh, suddenly. We were, we were uh, expecting the, the, the search to happen now around this week. And then suddenly, end of December, beginning of, of January, then a, a whole lot of a number of patients presented in our facilities. And they are not uh, mildly ill. It's patients that are critically ill that need immediate attention. Would you agree that the situation at your hospital, Steve Biko Academic, is unsustainable and you will need help from elsewhere? The, the help will be needed, but the uh, most help will be from the, the community. If only the community can uh, adhere to the to non-pharmaceutical uh, procedures that have been uh, communicated to them, as well as uh, adhering to the regulations that the government is putting, that will alleviate pressures. It's, it won't be sustainable in any health system that we have got uh, such a number of patients that all are acute. It's like a an aeroplane or a train has has a, has a, in an accident where you find and the type these type of patients in a train or aeroplane you do have patients that are mildly injured or let's say in a train not an aeroplane mm -hmm. mild they've got minor injuries but with COVID-19 even those that look at that stage to appearing not to be that seriously ill. It's a, it, 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 with, the, it's, with some of them, it's just a matter of minutes that the condition changes. Okay. Let's leave it there. Steve Biko, Academic Hospital CEO, Dr. Matabo Matebula, thank you.